So I thought I'd do a quick uh, follow-up to the video that I did um, recently about whether or not I was spending too much money on food. And let's not forget that I'm not compromising on eating here. Um, I have more than enough food. I could afford to shop probably half as much as I do now and still have enough food to eat. I don't go without. But I did some basic calculations. So I, I looked back at 2022 and I looked at last year at 2023. So 2022 was... Uh, my higher food spend out of my analysis and that was 230 pounds for the year and then last year was 120 and this year now looks it's like it's going to be more like 2022 and I was thinking well maybe that was just a blip but I wasn't quite sure how last year could be a blip if I feel like I'm still spending like last year and I wondered if it was mostly because of food price rises um, but the way I shop means that I'm not paying full price for food anyway. So I had a look at some of the numbers because the numbers don't really seem to be that different. So within an average, um, the full price that I would have paid if I wasn't buying on discount would have been roughly the same to within about £100. Um, the actual spend was way down last year. There must have been a lot of good discounts out there. But uh, what else? So yellow sticker savings wasn't as high last year as the year before. Cashback from cashback apps wasn't quite as high. Um, I was using a lot more nectar points. So I was earning less nectar points in 2022 than 2023. So I only earn an average of 15, uh, 15, I think I actually earned 15 pounds worth of nectar points in 2022 and I earned 119 pounds worth in 23. And that's because one of the things that I did last year, there were, there were two main things that I did last year that I think have affected these numbers. So the first one was I decided to make myself a challenge last year, which was to only buy yellow sticker food using gift cards and cashback apps that was my challenge for last year and that pretty much halved my food bill last year so I was using uh, I was doing more surveys as many surveys as I could and I was increasing the number of sites that I was using to earn gift cards and get like nectar points with so in 2022 I had four income streams um, which were giving me basically supermarket gift cards ie free food so I was earning the gift cards from doing surveys and then I could buy food and it wasn't impacting my actual food budget so I started out with four streams and 2022 was the year that I really started to crack down on side hustles and really started to work hard at it. That was the year that I earned my rock bottom income and I said, right, this has to change. So 2022, I had four income streams for effectively free food. So gift cards, supermarket gift cards, etc., etc. Last year, that went up to 11. So I joined more survey sites. I was doing more market research where they were paying you in gift cards and things like that. Um, so in 2022, I earned £167 worth of gift cards and supermarket points on loyalty cards because sometimes you get some on Morrison's, you get them on, um, on the Nectar as well. So that was £167. Last year, that was £449. So I went from an average gift cards and points per month of 13 to 37. And it just really made a massive difference. I looked at the number of items that I was buying. So I bought less items in 2022. I bought more items in 2023. And I'm looking like I'm about average for this year. So I haven't been over buying this year. 
but I have been changing my habits I think because I'm now doing the cleaning work and that means that there are two prime shopping days for yellow stickers when I am over doing the cleaning so I'm over it at almost at the supermarket so that's the Sunday mornings and the Tuesday evenings so I am probably picking up more items and I think that making YouTube videos about yellow stickers and the things that I've bought is probably encouraging me to go to the shops more than I would so it might be that I need to cut back on that a little bit if I want to stay within my uh, budget parameters for food but already this year it looks like my 2024 is going to be more like my 2022 and I'm just going to have to kind of bite the bullet that said the cashback apps have not been as good this year so far if I look at averages per month um, I would say that I've lost a couple of income streams for earning uh, gift cards and things already this year. A couple of sites have shut down. Uh, like redundant sites. So I think that there's a whole mixture of things going on here. Um, and that maybe last year was a bit of a blip, I think. I had a really good year for gift cards. A really good year for cash back. Not as much cash back. I don't think that shops are... Or retailers are willing to hand out so many freebies to attract new customers I think there's a bit of a crackdown on that although I am buying on yellow stickers you have to remember that a yellow sticker price is only the percentage of a full price so when the full prices go up as they still continue to do the yellow sticker prices are also going up so I am still paying more for my yellow stickers but I'm still paying the percentage off compared to the full price but incrementally that is still going up so I think that also has a lot to do with it so I might cut back a little bit on what I buy I am trying to buy better I'm trying not to buy so much processed food this year not been very successful so far but I'm going to try and do better um, because a lot of the stuff that ends up on the yellow sticker shelves can be a bit junk you know you get a lot of uh, not a lot of cake but when you see cake there is cake and processed bread and things like that I'm really in it for the fresh vegetables and the fresh meat things that I can turn into meals scratch cooking that sort of thing so I probably need to avoid the bakery aisle a bit more than I have been and go back to making my own bread which I did a lot more of last year I do still have a lot of items in my food store I have plenty of flour, things like that, and things like that which I saw a lot of last year. There was a lot of discounted flour, very little this year. I have started to see clamp downs in the amount of discounted food that is being handed out. Morrison's changed its reduced shelves around, um, I think it was probably towards the end of last year, and they're not as good. Some of it has increased. I've noticed that the fridged items they've got a lot more shelves but the ambient stuff that can live on the shelf like the tins etc far less of it so I need to just be aware of that but I've already lost the battle with making 2024 as cheap as 23 as long as I don't go over the 2022 it's not catastrophic it's not as if I'm going to starve if I have to buy less and it's not like I don't have the money to spend a bit more I like the challenge of it and given that you know sustainability and food waste is such a massive subject I never throw food away ever and I feel that you know when I'm buying yellow sticker food that I mean it probably wouldn't end up in the bin I think that the staff get first dibs on a lot of it and I would hope that if there was any left over at the end of the night, it goes to the Too Good To Go or food banks or somewhere. And I hope that they don't throw it away. But um, I feel that if I'm buying discounted food because they're not keeping it on the shelf, that at least it's going to get used. I might be completely delusional about that. I'm not sure. 
But that's my little update, so it makes sense that I've spent more money this year and that last year was just a phenomenally good year. I am still as strict about buying yellow stickers um, and I have stashed up quite a lot of nectar points now thanks to the survey sites that I use. So there's Nectar Canvas and eRewards where you earn... Um, you just exclusively earn nectar points and I've been doing working really hard to earn those I've now got 80 pounds in on my nectar card so I could stop going to Morrison's and just spend on Sainsbury's for a bit I like having that back up you know if something happens and I have to stop physically spending money I have all those nectar points that I can use as an emergency backup to buy stuff I don't think that it's a good idea to just blow it all because you can it's good to have these little stashes of things. So I'm going to see, just, uh, I thought that would be a good explanation because I was worried that I'm, I must have made a massive mistake in my calculations last year um, and it's, I didn't spend 120, it was something else. But it looks right. Um, I clearly worked a lot harder last year, 2022. I wasn't doing as much. I was still very early to the, the surveys game. I was just getting into cashback sites and I hadn't cracked down on only buying yellow stickers, which was last year. And that goes to show that if you're disciplined enough, you can halve your food bill. £120 for the year. Uh, one or two people have said that uh, you can't possibly only eat the equivalent of £24 of food a month. Um, you can. You actually can. You just have to be disciplined. I mean, retailers prey on your laziness, basically. They think that whatever they shove in front of you, you'll buy because you can't be bothered not to. It's why food home delivery does so well, why takeaway delivery companies do so well. It's because people just want the convenience and they'll pay pretty much anything for it by the looks of it. Um, I don't do that. And if you work at it, if you really want it, you can really reduce your food bill. It depends where you live, of course. I'm lucky that I live near a whole bunch of supermarkets. I'm lucky that the one that's closest to me has a lot of yellow stickers because I think a lot of the, particularly with the fresh food, it doesn't sell so well. <laughs> Around here, they are definitely takeaway people. Uh, and fresh veg gets remaindered a lot, which is good for me. Um, and you just have to get to know when's the best time to go. And it's easy for me. I can go at 9.30 on a Sunday morning. I can go at 7 o'clock on any evening. It's no, it's no difficulty for me. So I have the advantage that I can stick my neck out and work a bit harder because I don't have to worry about the 9 to 5 job getting in the way, the kids at home getting in the way, the after school clubs, the maybe I live a long way from the shops. Everything is on my doorstep and easy for me to do and I've taken advantage of that. So that's my little update. The figures are right. I just had a really, really good year. A lot of things were in my favour. Um, I will just keep monitoring numbers this year but it's going to be a more expensive year food wise. That said, my income has also gone up so it's all relative. Um, just the way it is. So I thought I'd do that as an update for anyone who's thinking that I must have just messed up my numbers and, and I thought I may have messed up my numbers um, or that I was just not reporting correctly. It all looks right. Um, last year's numbers were just really, really good. I got lucky with a lot of things. I worked really hard at it. So we'll see how this year goes. Uh, but I might have to start, you know, cut back on certain things, stick to just buying the fresh veg, um, the things that I really need to make the meals, stop buying the bread, stop buying the processed stuff, that will help cut the money back. Um, but I'm still going to overspend this year compared to last year. I think I will still be cheaper than 2022. Watch this space and I'll keep up with updates for you. Thanks for watching and speak to you soon.